Hello everyone, Mark here with another edition of SLP Shorts. In a moment, I'm going to be joined by Witness fan and SLP stalwart Paul O'Brien to go through his thoughts and some of your views on this week's big news story. Witness Vikings have sacked head coach Dennis Betts, ending his eight-year association with the Super League club. Betts, 48, oversaw Witness's progression from the Championship to Rugby League's top flight in 2012 and led them to the Challenge Cup semi-finals in 2014. But he has secured a top eight league finish only twice and the Vikings are currently bottom of Super League with three wins from 15 games this season. Assistant Francis Cummings has been appointed as interim boss. Dennis can be proud of his contribution to this club over the past eight years, Witness Chief Executive James Rule said. Whilst it is regrettable to lose someone of his experience and commitment, we believe that it is now the right time for a change in leadership. Dennis leaves with the absolute best wishes of everyone at the club for the future. Naturally, it will take time to identify and recruit a long-term successor for the role. However, we are grateful that Francis Cummings will be stepping up as our head coach on an interim basis. Francis has proven himself to be a talented, dedicated and knowable coach. Betts, who has also spent time as assistant to England coach Wayne Bennett, was the second longest serving head coach in Super League. It is with sadness that I leave the club, he said, but I feel proud of what has been achieved during my tenure and of the contributions of our players and back office staff. So we've got Paul O'Brien here then to give the witness view on the big news from the week. Welcome along, Paul. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. No, it's great to get a, a fan's perspective. That's what Super League Pod is all about. So, um, I suppose we'll start with what are your quick thoughts on the big story this week that Dennis Betts has left the Witness Vikings? I think it was inevitable, really. The time had come now after eight years in charge. Uh, we're going through a really bad patch at the moment. Uh, and unfortunately, the coach is always the one in the firing line. I think because as far as he could at the moment. And there's new blood is needed but I don't think it's just all down to Betts as coach yeah I was going to say like obviously you've covered it's, it's sort of the right time he's been in the job for eight years um, there's probably not much more he would do he would be able to get out of this playing squad most of them have as we know played for him for at least two years and renewed for at least two years <laughs> um, <laughs> and so yeah you mentioned there maybe it's not all on Betts so do you think Betts has been the man to fall on his or do you think he should have been the only man to take the fall or do you think there's other changes that you think need to be considered as part of this Betts sacking? I think there's something more going on within the club. There's obviously the, on Friday night against Wakefield there was quite a few fans around me shouting for James Rule to leave as well who happens just to sit behind us in the executive boxes. Uh, so there was a bit of a discontent from some fans about James Rule. Obviously, James Reel's been there since 2012, uh, and there seems to be a lack of investment. We're not the best of supporting clubs. We never have been, and it is hard to get investment on board, but what we want as fans is a team that are willing to give on the field. I feel at the moment, Betts has fallen on the sword. He's the head coach. He's always going to be the one that's going to take the first shot, but maybe Reel needs to look at himself and what he's doing with the club, and maybe others within the club as well, playing staff as well. Are the players there who are just taking a wage and do not want to play for the club? Is this think, a... Go on, think, sorry. Do you think that's part of why this was the right time for Betts to go? The, the same players that he'd, man, he'd, he'd managed to get out, get things out of in the past, do you think he wasn't really getting the same maybe creative imp impetus out of players like Reese Hambry and Joe Meller, maybe the same kind of... Um, skill and finishing abilities out of some of the, the men out wide. Do you think basically the players weren't responding to him the same anymore in his tactics? I think so. We were a very easy team to read really. Any fan from any club that watched Witness play knew what most of our moves were going to be. Even when Brown was there, it was always brown Meller, hanbury connection that came out on the left-hand side of the field and it continued when Gilmore came in. Now, as a head coach, surely you should be looking at that and saying, right, we're now failing to do things. Because in 2016, at the beginning of the year, when we played really, really well with that combination, we were hitting teams and, and winning some good games. But then yeah. the team on top of that, and we then started, then we went on to that run where we, we just finished in the top, we finished seventh in the league. And then the year after, in 2017, we didn't really do anything, finished in bottom. And we're now at present day where we, we seem to have stagnated. And we would not moved on from that beginning of 2016. I think that's an interesting point you pick on about kind of the way that you've attacked. I've, you know, 
always sort of feared Reese Hanbury a little bit, but if it, it was either a Joe Mella dummy and run or a pass to Reese Hanbury out the back and you sort of never as an opposing fan like I, I have been never really feared any of the other line runners around those two were going to really get involved in the attacking quarter um, on an often enough of occasion that you couldn't read the play so, so I, I think that's a, a good point and um, new ideas can now can now come in we've we've had a few other people's views on the story Paul so I'm going to run through that we've got a mixture of fellow witness fans of yours and a couple of other people who've thrown in some thoughts so I'm going to run through those and then get your reaction to those as well and see if you think the same sorts of things so the first one came in from Gareth Sunley Gareth says bets gone seems like a lot of fans got what they wanted something had to change but for me this mo- won't make a difference we seem unable or unwilling to invest in our first team recruitment is nothing short of a joke Wellington Albert can, Albert can play for about 10 minutes a spell and looks lost on the pitch Sam Wilde is never going to make a difference Stanton Albert played one game while struggling to get into the Crusaders team and Chris <laughs> Nintendo has a broken leg hardly the reinforcements to improve a team that finished bottom last season so that touches on the on the recruitment side how much do you think Dennis Betts had a role in the recruitment do you think some of that can be pointed at him as well I'm not sure to be honest I, I wonder how much of a say he's had on the recruitment obviously he was uh, involved with England during the close season so was out in Australia and whether he's seen these players and, and then said obviously with the, the uh, Albert brothers we, we had Wellington coming in and uh, K2 was supposed to join us and unfortunately due to the sad circumstances of course that happened and then I wonder if it was trying to be a quick fix of well Wellington may not come because of the incident with Cato and you could understand that he's coming to a different country a different culture that he's not used to and having somebody else uh, might have been great for him and whether they brought Stanton over just as a type of roommate type of thing to keep him it's just backfired on the club really because you've got this these two big lads that have come over here who the fans are expecting a lot from. One never even got to see first team rugby. Well, he played in the Coventry game in the Challenge Cup. And Wellington's getting 10, 15-minute runs. When he runs onto the ball, he's great. He runs forward, plays well. I just wonder how much more coaching he needs to be a top player. I I think there has been some, some bad calls. There's been some... You could argue unlucky, but argue under thought through calls as well. Because on recruitment, when I read Gareth's message, the first thing that I thought about really about investing in the first team and recruitment was when Kevin Brown was allowed to leave and no one was signed. And then midway through the season, um, Ch- uh, Rangi Chase was brought in. But obviously that didn't work out because of his off, off the field problems, which pre-existed his move to witness. Yes. So, so you're a little bit unlucky with thinking he was going to be the short-term replacement in those halves and, and give you a bit of a boost. But at the same thing, at the same time, kind of if you put yourself in a position where you're kind of making a desperate play for a player who's who's proven to make pro- problems in the past. So do you think the main recruitment issue is never replacing Kevin Brown properly? I think he's got a lot to do with it. Obviously, with Kevin Brown and the team, there was a leader on the field. He seemed to direct a lot of the traffic. Even if he wasn't involved in certain players, he would be stood back directing traffic. We lost him, obviously, to Warrington. He wanted to go. He wanted to go and win things, as he was quoted. And you can't blame a player who wants to progress. And I don't want a player staying at the club who doesn't want to play for the club. And if we'd have kept him, would he have put the full effort in because we'd declined him that offer that he and that chance to play for a so-called bigger club. So then we didn't invest that money, and we, we, we lack somebody on the field to direct, and maybe that lack of investment is costing us now because there's nobody really on the field that looks like a leader who seems yeah. to be directing us around the field. And it comes back to the mistakes we make all the time. When we're in, in, in control of games, when we have been this season, a little kick into touch or a big deep kick downfield, could have been the thing where we kick it into touch, rest the, have a little rest while the scrum's been formed, but we were making them silly errors of putting bombs up and giving the team, the opposing team, the ball back on their 40. So they're already made 40 metres and then we're conceding because we're giving teams a bit of a, a head start in a set of six. Yeah, and and obviously you, if you bring in a, a sort of a new coach, they can maybe guide those key players into making those decisions a little bit 
better. Um, Neil McEwen, he said, I'm 50-50. He's not been backed by the board financially, but he's not getting the best out of the squad. Cummings will get the job if he keeps us up as no one else will come with rule at the helm. Uh, we'll get on to the Cummings kind of taking over and the, the long-term picture towards the end. Yeah. Um, so I'll get your views on that later. Frogmore, our friend from Down Under, said, uh, Wayne Bennett to witness at the end of the season, it's virtually a lock. <laughs> Well, we'll we'll take that with a pinch of salt, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, the Wakey White, who's uh, obviously a Wakefield fan, you can pick that out of his username on Twitter there. Wakey White said, as a Wakey fan looking in, I think Witness's problems run far deeper than the Cookie Monster leaving. It's a tough gig for anyone that comes in. I feel they could be in a world of trouble if they make the wrong appointment. So we'll talk about the, the, the future appointment down the way, but in terms of a tough position... You are in a position, aren't you? A very tough position. You're, you're bottom of the table as it stands, um, and you're on a, a, a losing run, and you've not really got any easy games to see out. See out, so it's certainly easy home games to see out the rest of the way. It's, it's very challenging, isn't it? it? It's a very tough end of the season, really. We've got some big games. We've not got many home games neither, and the, the teams we're playing are all in good form. Our big problem at the moment is lack of confidence as well. I think. This streak of uh, defeats that we've been on, I think we've won 12 in the last 56 regular home games. And it's just been spiralling and spiralling on. But that's also down to the players. Yeah, the- well, I mean, there's like you could almost talk about the odd sliding doors moment in, in a in a way because there was obviously there was the two games against Wigan um, which would have been huge victories if you could have yeah. held on in those games. But the cup game against Leeds um, seemed to be... A big turning point from the fans. There was it was it was an unlucky result based on a few decisions in the game. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that was a game where Witness had a lot of opportunities to score points in that second half. And after that, having the Wakefield game where you you had a lot of opportunities to to score points in the first half, in the in the second half of that game too. You, you, it is this confidence thing, isn't it, in the attack? And if you'd have got over the line in the last 10 minutes of that Leeds game, maybe some of those players in those playmaking positions might have gained confidence, but they've they've certainly lost it all at this stage, haven't they? So bringing a new man in might be the right time for that, as you've alluded to. The final view added from one of the uh, fans, I don't think this guy's a listener, I think he's a friend of yours or a follower of yours, um, is, is a ch- Anthony Knight. He yes. says... Uh, we need a change. It won't solve the problems at the club, but it's certainly a start. Hopefully Cummins can keep us up and we get a decent coach in and build for next season. So uh, everyone's kind of vibe is, is is the same there. It's about there's bigger problems, but some change needed to happen. This is a start starting point towards that. So before we look at the bigger picture of the change and the longer run of the change and who, who might come in in the future, let's... Uh, let's have a little quick look back. I think it's worthwhile looking over Betts' time at Witness and yep. getting your view on what what legacy, if anything, he leaves at the club. So his, his Super League record, obviously he was the coach in 2010 and 2011 in the Championship. Sort of, You'd already basically fulfilled enough criteria by mid, the middle of 2010 to be in yeah. the Super League for 2012 onwards. It was just a case of making sure that licence was confirmed, which, which yeah. it was. So Betts' job through 2011 was planning for Super League wasn't it yeah it was in Super League he had a record of 58 wins 5 draws from 172 matches so that's a win percent ratio of 33% basically he won a third of his games yeah. in charge in Super League 2016 was arguably his best year he was the, the witness side was sitting top of the league after 6 rounds with people you know talking very positively about them and, and Joe Meller and Reese Hamry and Kevin Brown were ripping teams apart like you mentioned the, you ended up finishing 7th sit, um, yeah. 2014 was also a very good year um, you finished that year with almost a 50% win ratio after the 28 regular rounds that was pre uh, Super 8s so yeah. I think you won 14 sorry won 13 lost 13 and drew one game in the regular season that year um, yeah, we... and you, you grabbed an eight play finish finish in a playoff place that year too so that was the two top eight finishes Dennis Betts had 2017 though saw you last in Super League survived the qualifiers with relative comfort but last in Super League and then list this year obviously Dennis Betts has left you last after the 15 games so far yeah. so what 